and let's consider their encodings, and let's consider whether they accept themselves or not. So some of them do and some of them don't. There's the finite state machines in town that accept themselves and the finite state machines in town that don't accept themselves. All right, so I want to know, is there a finite state machine in town, some big one perhaps, some complicated one, that accepts exactly all the binary strings that represent finite state machines themselves that don't accept themselves. Okay, this is a very fancy finite state machine. It's supposed to take in other finite state machines as input. It takes other people in town in as input, just like the barber takes other people in town into his chair. These finite state machines take other strings in. The other strings represent other finite state machines, and they're supposed to decide do those finite state machines accept themselves or not. I want this finite state machine to say yes on all the strings that don't accept themselves. Now, that's perfectly reasonable hypothesis to exist, but if that machine existed, I'd ask you the question, what does that machine do when I input it to itself? Does it accept itself or not? If it accepts itself, then it's supposed to reject itself, because it's supposed to accept only the finite state machines that don't accept themselves. And if it rejects itself, it's supposed to accept itself, because it's supposed to accept only the ones that don't accept themselves. So it's just like the barber goes into a poof existence and can't exist. This finite state machine that reads all other finite state machines that don't accept themselves, that finite state machine doesn't exist, the same way the barber doesn't exist. So now I've described to you a language that there's no finite state machine for. And I'll write it down. Here's the language. The set of all finite state machines represented by some binary string which do not accept themselves. The set of all people in town who don't shave themselves. There's no barber who shaves all those people. There's no finite state machine who accepts all these finite state machines. It's the same paradox, the same conundrum. So here's the language. All the binary strings representing finite state machines that don't accept themselves, that language has no finite state machine for it. And the proof is just by this logical twist. So let me stop for a second. Teresa, you don't buy it, huh? It seems confusing, huh? It's like you're setting up a straw man. You know, there's this encoding thing out there that's sort of, I, I, I don't know what to do with. And so, it's like the barber. Well, we'll move him out of town, and now it's not a problem anymore. I mean, that's like... Well, we're going to move this guy out of town, and it won't be a problem anymore. Okay, I guess it... We'll do that soon. But, you know, you do the encoding. Encode it any way you like. And you're going to account for both cases, whether it accepts it. I already I did. I mean, it's just... You already have. I yeah, mean, I mean... I, I just need to see where that is. Yeah, there's no... There's nothing that depends on this encoding. I mean, some of the machines accept themselves and some don't, but you're there's... You're separating them. Right, you're just separating them into two parts. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's do a little bit, maybe a little visual version of this. A visual way to think of this is to make a table. We just took a finite state machine before and encoded it into binary. So let's, let's use Teresa's method. I don't care what method she uses to encode finite state machines into binary. But whatever method she uses, every finite state machine has some binary encoding. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all the finite state machines in the world, we'll encode them into Teresa's binary, and then we'll look to see um, which ones have the smallest binary number, and we'll just order them, all in order, so that the machine that I will now call machine number one or machine zero, will be the binary encoding of yours that's the smallest one. And the next one, the one we'll call one, will be the next smallest binary encoding. And this will be the next smallest binary encoding, and the next one, etc. Okay? So now I'm going to re-encode all these finite state machines to be nicely done in order. That's the smallest one, the second smallest, the third smallest, etc. And I list the strings up here, too. And now for every finite state machine, I go ahead and I check whether it accepts all these inputs. Does this machine accept itself? Turns out it does. Does this machine accept the string number one? No. Does it accept the string zero one? No. Does it accept the... Str 
It's like I wrote this twice. They accept the string 0, 0, no. Does it accept the string 0, 1? Yeah. Does it accept the string 1, 1? Okay. I'm making these up randomly. I don't know what this finite state machine looks like. It's Teresa's encoding. I don't even know what it is. And it doesn't matter to me. It's some finite state machine, and here is its accepting and rejecting uh, values. It accepts these strings, it rejects these strings. And it goes on forever, accepting and rejecting. And every one of these finite state machines has its own little set of acceptances and rejections. Right? And you can just run through every single input and check. All right, lots of confused looking faces. How can I help? Okay? Yeah, Joe? What? The zero, 01 for the FSMs. Yeah? Uh, is that the entire encoding string, or is that just, you're just using a binary representation? Here and here and here and here and here? Is that the actual encoding? That's the entire encoding of the machine. I re encoded them. Teresa gave me some complicated encoding, so every machine had whatever, and anywhere from 30 to 180 symbols. So now I just took all those encodings in order from smallest size to largest size, and I renumbered them. The smallest one I'm calling zero, the second smallest one, just so that I could number them nice and easy this way. Okay? And that's another way to say that all the finite state machines are countable. You give me a binary number, and then I'll order them as to their size. So I'm going to put down some more ones and zeros here just to fill up the chart. Okay, and this chart goes on forever. Now, this language we talked about, the set of all finite state machines which do not accept themselves, you can figure out what this language looks like from this chart. Here's a finite state machine. Does it accept itself? It does. Here's a finite state machine. Does it accept itself? It doesn't. I'm going to circle that one. So the finite state machine labeled 1 is a string in this set, a finite state machine that doesn't accept itself. Where's the next one that doesn't? 100, zero, zero, right? I think that one doesn't. Oh. Well, if you assume. <laughs> did I not? Did I? Oh, because I missed you. <laughs> They're all messed up? That doesn't help? Uh, let me get it right. Zero, one, zero, 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 one. One, zero, one, one. Jeez. Can't count in binary, huh? Let me just do it right and count it right in binary. Zero, one, zero, zero. Zero, zero, thank you. Oh, one, one, zero, one, one. There we go. All right. All right, it's just this side that was off. All right, now we're set. Bye bye, eraser. All right, so this one doesn't accept itself. What else? <coughs> this one doesn't. <coughs> and there might be a lot more. All the strings that have zeros on the diagonal are going to be finite state machines that don't accept themselves. And I want to consider all those strings as a language. So here's what it would look like. It would be 1, it would be 1, 0, and it would be a whole bunch of others. I don't know what they are. I'd have to go down and look. So the set of all these zeros that appear in the diagonal, if I listed them in a big set, that's exactly the set of strings that I guarantee to you have no finite state machine that exists. And it's because of this funny question about what happens to this machine when you run it on itself. So let's see what that question does in terms of this diagram. Let's say, Teresa doesn't believe this, and she says, I think there might be a finite state machine that accepts this. So I go, well, where is it? And she says, I don't know, it's down here at uh, the 52nd you know, entry. Or the 3,000th entry. So it's someplace in this chart. So the question is, what happens to this machine when you run it on itself? Go all the way to the diagonal, and on question mark, what's in that spot? Is it a 1 or a 0? If it's a 1, that means it accepts itself, then what? Is it going to be in the set? Then it shouldn't be, right? But if it accepts itself, if it's really in this set, 